probably why he's not banning right now. He's leaving the banning up to his partner, Nobara, and Arfod is going to pick second. Guess he's too much of a nubcake to, to start off the bans. So, first couple bans, we have Thresh as well as Twisted Fate. And both fairly standard bands, I have to say. We've been seeing these bands for the past couple months. Thresh is always that really, really strong champion who's got a lot of CC. And it does it's not really all about his base damages or anything like that. It's just the fact that he has a hook. It can disposition you. It stuns you for a couple seconds. And he can also have the box. Great AoE ultimate ability. If you run through one of the box's sort of walls, then you get a debilitating slow. It's like a 90% slow, which is very, very large. It really shuts down a lot of a lot of champions who are reliant on positioning that doesn't come in the form of dashes. Someone like Ezreal can easily, you know, arcane shift out of it or arcane shift through it or whatever you want. But champions with speed boosts, in terms of that's how they get their mobility, are going to suffer a lot. Champions like Draven, Misfortune, uh, Varus, people who rely on movement, actual walking movement in order to get places rather than dashing, flashing, or jumping. Other bands, we also have Blitzcrank, Shen, Zack, and Kha'Zix. Purple team banning out both Twisted Fate and Shen, they really want to get rid of that global pressure, which is a, another really big theme we've been seeing pretty recently. We've been seeing a lot of this heavy AoE team fighting, and we've also been seeing a lot of global pressure, but sometimes those two things go pretty hand in hand, such as Shen. Shen's got some really nice team fighting ability, and he has global pressure, so he's a really high priority ban. We also see champions Blitzcrank and Zack being banned out. Both have a lot of CC. Zack is more towards the tanky side. He can, he's either jungler top, whereas Blitzcrank is the support that we're going to be seeing with a lot of those dispositions and whatnot. So blue team really taking out a lot of those heavy, heavy CCs. Both Blitzcrank and Thresh banned for the blue team. We can definitely see that their bans are taking sort of a similar, uh, a, a common theme in their bans. Meanwhile, the purple team, their last ban was Kha'Zix, who is... Not really global pressure, but he's got a lot of burst damage and it really, really helps quite a bit. Purple team. Their first two picks are Cho'Gath and Leona, but both very, very heavy AoE, AoE champions, I have to say. So we are going to continue with that big AoE teamfight comp in terms of what these teams are going to be and teams are going to pick. Well, at least purple team is going to pick. We're not too sure on blue team yet, but the Sojuani pick is probably going to tell us that they're going to run sort of that big AoE team fight as well. So the purple team, Cho'Gath and Leona, very, very big AoE team fight abilities. Renekton is actually not so much so, but he hasn't been locked in yet, so we'll have to see what he decides to pick <clears throat> at the end of the game. Blue team, however, they have Tristana and Jana to go along with Sejuani, which is sort of odd picks, I have to say. Jana is certainly there for a disengage sort of sort of style where she can basically disengage the initiation from the blue team and since Renekton has been locked in I have to actually have to say Janna pick is a lot better due to that because she can easily ult Renekton away from whoever is targeting her AD carry and she can do that with basically everyone except for Ezreal for the purple team as well because a lot of the CC on the purple team are close range CC. Cho'Gath has to be really close in order to use the silence not so much to land his rupture but his rupture is only one facet of his CC so if you're staying at the end ed edge of the fight only using rupture in terms of a team fight, then you're not really playing Cho'Gath correctly because he wants to be in the middle, he wants to be disrupting people with his tankiness and maybe nomming a carry along the way. Leona is also a champion who's got really close range CC. Zenith Blade isn't technically close range, but it forces her to get closer to whoever she Zenith Blades, so it basically puts her near whoever she's targeting, really helping out Janna in terms of her ability to disengage Leona as well. All excellent points, Azraki. Also, I'm totally back. I can pay attention now. No, this is a very interesting... I can interesting... tell you're back because you've got this slight laughing sort of thing <laughs> in your voice where you're like, ah, I'm sort of back right now. <laughs> and uh, I, I can tell that you've just finished. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. It took me a moment. Uh, but, you know, these team comps are very interesting. We could see the blue team, like you said, they went for that Sejuani. They went for that Tristana. But once Cho'Gath and Leona were picked up, you also saw them going ahead and taking on that Janna. Janna ability, I mean, her ultimate is going to be great for the disengage. It's going to be great having to reposition the enemy team, especially if they're going and they want to try and initiate with a long range stun or a knockup coming out from either Cho'Gath or Leona. Being able to use that ultimate to essentially disposition everybody to reset themselves to get back into a fight is going to be absolutely amazing for them. 
Yeah, the blue team, they're taking sort of their own AoE, pseudo AoE, I have to say. They have Sejuani and Vladimir, whose ultimates stack very, very well. Sejuani locks everyone down, Vladimir lands his ultimate, and everyone just does more damage from that point on. Or they can time it pretty, they can time it even more by having Vlad use his ultimate right before Sejuani's ultimate hits, so that also amplifies Sejuani's ultimate's damage. But on top of that, we also have Tristana, who's not really that big AoE fighter as we know of. She does have a strong AoE ability, but as we said before, it causes her to basically outposition herself, and she ends up in the middle of the fight, which is never what you really want to do as an AD carry. So she's going to be using that more towards positioning, but we also have Pantheon, who's Ultimate is a pretty large AoE ability, although he's going to be using it more to, more to either initiate a fight or get to a fight, because if he's in the middle of a fight, he does have to charge it up, which is something that he's going to be able to be hit quite a bit while that happens, and he, he might also be able to be stunned. And considering the amount of CC on the purple team, there's a lot of places where he can in, where they can interrupt Pantheon's, Pantheon's ultimate. So, odd pseudo AoE comp from the blue team, I think the main synergy is going to come from the fact that Sejuani's going to alt with Vlad. That's going to provide a lot of lockdown as well as provide damage amplification so that Tristana and Pantheon can do a lot of damage to whoever they choose. Maybe they can target down the same person, maybe they can target down different people. But all the while, their damage will be amplified and the people they're not targeting are going to be stunned for a little bit. So it does help quite a bit in terms of that. Although I would have liked to see maybe a little bit more AoE sort of oriented AD carry, such as Varus, who can really follow up a lot better than Tristana, in my opinion. But we'll have to see how they make that comp work. On the meantime, the purple team is going for a much more, I think, season two sort of oriented comp, where we have Ryze, Ezreal, Cho'Gath, Leona, and Renekton, all champions that were very popular during season two. I can see it working during season three, think they could have also used a little bit more in terms of AoE ability. We're gonna... I'm... We're really gonna need to see Renekton pick up an early Sunfire's Cape in order to be able to sort of... Actually, not early. He's up against Vlad. I just saw that. So, he's most likely up against Vlad, actually. Might, might be Pantheon. Both of those champions can mid or top, but if he is against Vlad, then he's probably not going to want the extremely early, like the first build. Uh, Sunfire Cape, but he's going to need one throughout the game because otherwise his AoE damage is just going to be lacking for the rest of the game. He can put out a lot of single target damage, but as we said before, if he gets a Sunfire Cape, it stacks with his ultimate, he's doing a lot more damage to an AoE, and it really causes the blue team to say, alright, he actually does damage, we can't just ignore him in these fights. So that's going to be a good buy on him and something I expect to see first or second item, depending on who goes top lane for the blue team. All excellent points. I'm really excited to get into this game. You know, both comps very AoE oriented, more so than anything. You know, you've got Rise coming out, Ezreal, Cho'Gath, Leona. All very interesting to see, but more so, if the blue team is able to execute one of their combinations right, being, you know, uh, Sejuani ultimate, Vlad ultimate, Tristana damage, as well as the Pantheon ultimate, that is going to be an amazing amount of damage we're going to see go down onto the purple team, and pretty much enough to melt just about anybody. <laughs> very, very high melting power. Going to the summoner spells, because we haven't actually talked about those yet, we see the fact that Ryze has taken teleport, and that's something that's very popular on Ryze, because he's really, really good at roaming around and ganking. He shows up in a lane, and Rune Prison is an instant snare. It doesn't have a travel time, and it doesn't have... It, it's not a skill shot. So it can be used rather instantly. You can't dodge it or anything of the sort, and it's really going to help CC whoever, whoever he's ganking, and the rest of his lane is going to be able to combo up with that and do a lot of damage, especially if it's something like bot lane, where they have a lot of CC on their own. We see say Ryze lands a Rune Prison, follow up with Leona's stun, she can land a Zenith Blade a lot, eat more easily, and there's just a lot of damage coming from both Ezreal, Sona, and Ryze on that bottom lane. They're going to be able to turn a fight really easily if he were to teleport into the bot lane. Yeah, One thing gonna... I've, I've noticed is that sometimes before a game starts, when we're talking about picks and bans, I like to make motions with my arms even though I know no one can see them. Really weird. I don't know why. I do that during team fights all the time. I'm sitting here like waving my arms around and pointing and gesturing and stuff and nobody can see what I'm doing. I feel like a complete derp. <laughs> it's alright. I, I do it as well. We can double, double derp on those. Alright, good to know. At least I'm not alone on that one. I wonder if other casters do that. 
Yeah, that's that's something I want to wonder as well. I I know the fact that a lot of casters do that when they're on camera, but maybe some of that on camera movements translate into in game just from force of habit or something like that. It would be well, it, something it also, really interesting to ask. It also makes sense. How boring would it be to see somebody sit there like a news anchor with their hands in their lap, leaning forward slightly to try and cast the game? That seems really boring to watch. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd have to agree with that. We do, we, the purple team has four skins, whereas the blue team has two. So purple team wins the skin war, skin war right there. Even yeah. though they have Bloodlord Vladimir. Uh huh. Team yeah, you. I I know you're laughing at four skin. I don't. <laughs> it's why I don't really call attention to that because everyone already knows the joke. It's it's one of those unspoken things where you don't yeah, need to say it. Me, it's just there. Just let me giggle like an idiot, okay? Stop stop ruining right. my fun, Azaraki. Why why you gotta be such a Debbie do, Downer? Do you wanna? Do you want to actually say the joke? Because you can if you want. No, Go for it. no, I'm good. I'm good. I just want to snicker at the name. I'm fine. All right. All right. Go for it. You can snicker all you want then. Okay, but cool. It looks like Pantheon will be going for the mid lane and Vladimir will be going top. So we're not going to see the early Sunfire Cape coming out from Renekton, but I can expect some other things, possibly a Hex Drinker. Although the Hex Drinker is not going to be something that really helps him too much in terms of his early game laning. Obviously, on Renekton, I, I do want to see Giant's Belt first, whatever he decides to turn that into, because Giant's Belt is an item that really a lot of top laners want to build, because it gives them so much more laning power. They can farm up. It, it works on a lot of different champions as well. It works on the passive sort of farming champions. We see Shen build it first a lot, because he can just stay in lane, you know, throw Vorpal Blades, farm out, and any poke that he takes will not be as effective because he's got, what, 380 more health, I believe it is. It's a lot of health for a 1,000... 1,000... I was about to say $1,000, but 1,000 gold item. So it's something that is really useful for a lot of top laners. Vlad uses health in order to cast spells. It's a resource for him, so he needs Giant's Belt as well. Renekton can use Giant's Belt. It makes trades more efficient for him. And generally, we... Uh, one little saying that I hear sometimes is that top lane is made by who can get the Giant's Belt first. And in a lot of matchups, that's actually more true than it seems, where if one person has the Giant's Belt on top of the other person, you know, that's 300 health. If a gank comes around, that person will be ahead. Whatever happens in engagement, that person with the Giant's Belt over the enemy will be ahead in the early game engagements. So going back into what's actually happening in the game at the moment, we see both teams, they're just taking sort of their own jungle in being in the defensive route. And I think Ryze took support masteries, so that's unfortunately going to hurt him a little bit. Oh, actually, no. They're doing another lane swap. We're going to see AD carry and support mid for the blue team. Or for the red team, sorry. And we're going to see Ryze actually go in the bottom lane. They gave him blue right away, so he's going to be pretty pretty far ahead in the bot lane. He's really going to have to watch out for the level 2 engage from Tristan and Janna, however, especially since he's already gone back. Yeah, this is a really smart move on the part of the red team, though, sending those two in mid, mostly because Leona and Ezreal won't have a chance to get an early level 2 to get on top of uh, both Tristana and Janna. And essentially what that means is that with them having the level advantage, they're going to be taking a lot of pain and a lot of, sorry, um, hiccups, Jesus, um, a lot of pain and a lot of poke out from that Tristana, which isn't something they're going to be able to deal with. They're just going to get out damaged in the lane early on, so it's not a smart idea. But this rise in bot lane, I'm interested to see how it works. We saw Cho'Gath starting with red, but it doesn't look like he's going for an early gank at all. You can see the power of push coming out from both Tristana and Janna right now, forcing this rise back under his turret. He doesn't have a lot of early game clear on his spells. You know, his CSing is mostly reliant on auto attack, so I'm interested to see how this will go, because it looks like they may just end up conceding this top to or this bottom tower. I actually say that Ryze wants to be pushed in this bottom lane. If he's forced to farm out near the middle of the lane, there's just so much engage damage that both Janna and Tristana can put out. There's a shield from Janna basically making Tristana do more damage with her auto attacks, and Tristana already has quite a bit of early game burst from Rocket Jump. So it's going to be pretty good for him to be pushed back under his tower for the first couple levels. And once he gets to about level 5 or 6, I think he can start affording to push out a little bit more. He'll be ahead in level from both Tristana and Janna, so that's going to help him out quite a bit. So I, I do like the fact that he's playing this a little, little bit passively, and something that I was really scared of is seeing Ryze basically 
overextend a little bit too far and get first blooded by Janna and Tristana, but I'm pretty glad he didn't do that. This game is going to be a pretty good game. Yeah, it's just, it's interesting to see overall. I do like the swap, just because Pantheon is going to be a rough matchup for Ryze, so Ryze trying to take an avenue for at least some safe farming, but Pantheon's ability to wave clear is going to be better than Ryze's right now, so depending on how hard the bot lane of the blue team decides to push, I mean, in reality, they could still take that early tower, and that gold advantage is just going to help out the team overall. Yes, both both mid laners are... Both teams actually have a, a way, a way, God, a way to get an early game tower. Israel and Leona, if Pantheon decided to push out a little bit, then Leona's got a lot of stuns, and as well as a lot of burst damage, he can apply passive procs, which help Ezreal do his damage, so he doesn't want to push out all that much, and the junglers are really going to be what happens in these games to decide who goes ahead of this lane swap, because both, both duo lanes have some really nice engaged potential. Yeah, and we and can we'll see the see. kink and the counter gank coming out from bot lane. Cho'Gath in here, and here's Sejuani, the knock-up going down, the jump coming out from Tristana. There we go, there's the flail of the northern winds coming out, and the Q charge from the piggy, but it is not going to be enough. They are going to get them out of there, but unfortunately, just no knock-up quick enough coming out from Sejuani. So Cho'Gath will get away. An excellently placed rupture on the part of Cho'Gath, though. Managed to keep him, uh, keep him alive there. Yes, indeed. One, one thing I would like to ask is, do you think the boar would take offense to being called a piggy instead of a boar? No, he, look, no? Bristles is a piggy, okay? Just get over it. He's, he's always going to be a piggy. All right, well, looking to gank towards mid lane. <laughs> it's a good idea on her part because she's going to get a lot of CC, and here we go. Yeah, and here's Sejuani, an excellent play by Leona coming up and using that Zenith Blade to just further herself out of that fight. The exhaust going down and a flash being forced out, and there is First Blood. Will Ezreal manage to pick up the revenge kill? It does not look like he's going to be able to go in here, and that will be Pantheon picking up Leona. Flash burn for Sejuani, so she's not going to have access to that. Neither is Pantheon. Both of his summoners are down, but in return, they manage to get both first blood and all the summoners cleared off of Leona. And Cho'Gath looks to be coming up here for the potential engagement, but I just don't think it's going to happen. I think he's playing it way too safe. Balin has already pushed that tower down, so rises without a tower. This is something that's not going to benefit him nearly as much as he would want to. And I'm honestly a little bit surprised to see that he hasn't teleported anywhere yet. Obviously, his lane is going to go down either way. It's just, there's so much pushing power that if he were to stay in lane, his tower would have died anyway. It's just a matter of time in terms of how long it takes for his tower to go down. But I think he, he should have made some more pressure somewhere else around the map, especially maybe in top lane to shut down Vlad to make sure that he gets ganked before level 8 or 9 where Vlad really starts to get strong. Sijuani hasn't even ganked, uh, sorry, Cho'Gath hasn't even ganked top to try to prevent that. And once Vlad hits those higher levels, then he's going to have quite a bit of power over, over Renekton especially since he has a Seeker's Arm Guard, giving him a lot of armor against what Renekton is going to try to uh, use. You know, I was thinking the exact same thing there, Rise. I just don't think he's utilized his summoner spells correctly, and what advantage his team tried to give him in the early game, I just don't think it's working out for him. They've managed to lose a turret, they've lost first blood, and now you can see a gold differential slowly starting to build up. So even though it's a 2v1 in mid lane right now, um, it's just a huge advantage on the part of the blue team. And here's the engagement going down. Janna forced to flash out. She's getting very low. Nice disengage by her with that tornado, but will it be enough? And there's a flash coming out, and Ryze is going to... Yes, he's going to get taken down here. Here's a Pantheon drop-in coming in the shield. A barrier coming out from Tristana, and there will be the kill for Pantheon. An excellent job on his part, and Janna manages to get out of there. It looks like she's getting down very low down in that bot. Oh, man, I don't think she's going to be able to get out of this. Nope. Oh, my God, she's going to get away. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Janna. Janna, Janna, Janna. I, I'm not sure. Arcane Shift got off of cooldown, I, I think, right after he decided to dis disengage that. So I'm not sure why he didn't decide to chase. I think, the rest, I think he figured the rest of blue team is probably on their way down and chasing into that is probably not the best idea. But in terms of the team fight, the, the biggest place where the red team went wrong was just the fact that their positioning was not as good as it could have been. They sort of initiated oddly. 
they caught someone out, but the rest of his team wasn't close enough to engage on top of that. Ryze had to ru run around the mid lane. He took some free poke from Tristana. Ezreal had to arcane shift over the wall, and by the time Ryze got there, he was on really low health. He had to flash out of there. And afterwards, they were really grouped up. Perfect initiation or perfect ultimate by Pantheon to pick up a kill and zone the rest of the people out of the fight. So it was more of it was both play both teams playing well and playing badly. That's yeah, not the that right was... way to phrase that. It's the blue team <laughs> playing well and the red team playing badly. Uh, sort of what just, I was trying to trying to say. It was just so rough to see. You know, Janna did an excellent job by getting out of there, but this is kind of the curse of the lane swap. I mean, this is something that we've seen consistently, not just in this tournament, but in a lot of tournaments in general. We could see that, you know, as these guys go in and they initiate the lane swap, the other team, whether they just have a better reaction or it's just not a favorable matchup, it doesn't work as they thought it would in theory, for whatever reason, you know, it just goes badly. In this particular instance, it wasn't a good matchup. Ryze doesn't have the ability to CS too well under tower with a low face attack damage, and most of his CS in the early game being based off of that. So he doesn't really have the option to sit under a turret and, and do that for very long, as Tristana and Janna will just endlessly poke at that turret with all the range that they have, and that shield, of course, helping to just gain that attack damage. Meanwhile, in top lane, Vlad's pretty much been left to free farming. You can see how badly he's bullying out Renekton right now. Yeah, going back on what you said, I think one of the main things is that the red team kind of underestimated the pushing power of Tristana, Janna. They really pushed right onto Ryze, took his tower down very, very early, and it really showed the fact that the lane swap was not in favor of them. It looks like in the mid lane, Sejuani's trying to do something, but I think Ryze is too far away in order to follow up with anything from that. And as we said before, Ryze really didn't make anything out of, out of his teleport. As I always like to say, teleport... By going to take Teleport as a top laner or mid laner or something of the sort, you're foregoing one of your in-lane summoner spells. So he doesn't have his either Ignite or Barrier or anything that would help him out in-lane. So he really needs to, instead of taking the advantage from the summoner spells, take it from Teleport. Yeah, and in the top lane we can see the engagement. A nice Sejuani all will help her to pick up that kill with the Permafrost. You can see Tristana just jumping in and do so much damage, punishing that Leona after she decided to use her Zenith Blade, engage onto the Janna who instantly used a tornado behind her. You know, I have to say, I'm really starting to love Janna lately. Don't get me wrong. I love my Lulu and I love my Sona, but Janna is just really impressing me with play lately and I've actually really enjoyed playing her. Janna was one of, actually one of my first mains and uh, she became my main once again when I swapped back to support and I played support for quite a while, Janna was my go-to champ. And even when that one during that one point in Season 2 where she became unfavorable, not a lot of people played her, I still played her quite a bit because her kit really works very well. She has a tornado which can essentially knock up an entire team if they're lined up, if you land it correctly. She also has a great shield which amplifies the power of her auto her AD carry, and it also gives them a shield to help them survive burst, and her ultimate, if used correctly, can be huge in a team fight. It can disengage, it can do whatever you really want it to. It's just not one of those, you know, AoE stack abilities, but it's so versatile as an ultimate. You can also use it at near the beginning of the fight, and you can keep it on to heal your teammates as well. She's got a great kid, and I think that uh, during that period she was underestimated, but Looks like she is coming back into favor now. Really like Janna and going once again going back to that lane swap a little bit. But it looks like Pantheon's in the top lane. Yeah, he's going to come up here for the gank. We saw the Vlad ultimate coming out. Probably a little bit of overkill there. Pantheon managing to meld him. We saw Cho'Gath go up in response to this. But that's still going to be it. He's literally just going to be able to sit there to try and uh, keep, keep the turret from going down. Uh, what an unfortunate engagement. You saw all those ultimate birds burst for Renekton. In reality, I think uh, I think Vladimir could have probably taken him by himself. Pantheon not really needing to go up in there, but it, it just, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It's another assist for him. You can see Sejuani. Sejuani has better wave clear than Ryze does. Like, he's having such a rough time right now. He's so far behind. Only 67 CS at this point in the game. He's having absolutely no luck right now. He's, he's quite far behind this Pantheon, about 20 CS down. He's died once and in the top lane, we can see an engagement, a nice jump by Tristana. will keep her out of that ultimate, even though she was engaged and stunned upon. 
one other thing I would like to point out is the fact that Renekton, I don't really think, is playing this, this oh, game sort of correctly. Oh, and there's the ultimate oh, coming out from Leona, the Zenith Blade, but she gets knocked up right in the middle of it. Rise finally utilizing that teleport, and Janna said, you know what, I'm just going to take one for the team. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. A nice shield on herself, and we saw the ultimate coming out from Tristana, that knockaway coming out, and we can still see Janna running a lovely tornado coming out, and there is a slice and dice, a stun going down, and Janna will finally manage to go down. Holy cow, that chase. So much for one support. So much for one support. And they, the, blue, the red team also popped all of their ultimates, except for Renekton's and Cho'Gath's. Cho'Gath obviously wasn't able to get in range to use Feast, but they really wanted to kill Janna. Two they flashes, put them on the board a teleport, and an ignite. I'll, yes. I'll repeat that. Two flashes, a teleport, and an ignite on top of Leona's ultimate. Like, how desperate are you for a kill? I don't know if that was the best choice, and now we can see no mana on Ezreal. This is an excellent engagement on the part of Sejuani. She's easily going to be able to take him down unless he gets the mana for his arcane shift. Meanwhile, in the top lane, we do have an engagement. Vladimir taking out Ryze, and here we go. This may be the first favorable engagement on the part of the red team, but no, Tristana managing to clean up a kill there. Renekton doing his best to try and get on the board, but it is not going to happen as Vladimir manages to take him down with no health whatsoever. Oh, that is so rough, and now Vladimir coming up, and he's going to end up taking down this Leona with the help of Tristana and that will be an ace from across the map. Ooh, very very good plays by the blue team. Uh, as I was Stop. going to say before some of that action happened, I re oh Vlad, very very close there. But uh, one thing I would like to point out is the fact that Renekton not really building the way that he should have built. He built towards damage first. He built Brutalizer first. Really not the best decision in his case. Even though Vladimir had taken a Seeker's Arm Guard early, he really needs to be tanky. And just because they have a Cho'Gath on the team, a really tanky champion, their dedicated champ, saying, all right, Cho'Gath, you guys, you can tank for our team. I don't need to build any tank. Unfortunately, that's not true in lane. In lane, you still need to build towards the matchup. You still need to build what benefits you most, even if you need to build tank in order to win your lane. And he get, he went for straight up damage, and as we saw way back, he got bursted down really, really quickly. He got completely melted as soon as Pantheon came top. There's really not much he could do about it, and he doesn't have any health items. He doesn't have enough health. Look at him. He's sitting at 1,400 health. That's that's not nearly enough. That's not what he needs in order to be a top laner, and that's why he's gotten so far behind in this game. Vlad is now 3-0, and and he's 0-2. Uh, this is just so rough to watch. I mean, at this point, it's becoming a stomp. The, the gold differential is huge at this point in the game, nearly 10,000 gold at only 17 minutes. This is absolutely astonishing on the part of the blue team. They've made this an absolute stomp. Four turrets to zero at this point. Now, Sejuani having to back off here. She nearly gets caught out in the enemy jungle. The pings going down as Janna and Tristana go ahead and back off, not realizing there's actually a ward here. So they'll go ahead and place a ward in the lane and then back right off, and it doesn't look like the enemy team is going to take that chance to engage on them. Not that they'd be able to, considering a very nice ward at blue would have kept them safe. Another thing that strikes me kind of odd in this game is the fact that Ezreal went for Bloodthirster first, which is not really anywhere near the popular build we see on Ezreal. Ezreal Ezreal's build right now, the main one that we see all very often, is the blue Ezreal build. It gives him oh, a lot here of cooldown reduction. we go for the reduction. engagement, the ultimate coming out from Leona, and that Vladimir ultimate not quite managing to connect with everybody, but here's the follow-up ultimate from Sejuani. Tristana managing to clean up a kill as well as Sejuani, and... Ah, uh, and Pantheon, and they're going to have to disengage here. Tristana continuing to go in with the help of the shield from Leona, and the stun going out. Ooh, will this spell the death of her? And oh, yes, Tristana will manage to finally get shut down by Leona, but at what cause? Uh, that was that was a turret. That was a turret and four kills. That's just, that's so sad to see. It was a little bit hard to watch. It was an amazing, just an absolutely amazing counter ultimate by Sijuani, able to capture three members of their team as they were trying to focus down, I think Vlad it was, when he got low in terms of his health. Very, very nice ultimate in that case. Really 
I'm, I'm not sure if it exactly turned the fight because the blue team not, might have been able to win the fight without it, but it certainly helped them just completely win the fight right then and there. And I think they would have taken a lot more casualties, if not maybe lost the fight if Sejuani didn't you, didn't pull off that ultimate. So it's a great job on her part in order to do that. And it looks like the blue team taking a dragon off of this, putting them even farther in the lead right now. We have a 12k gold difference. 18 minutes into the game, that's a fairly huge amount. And we can see it in the build as well. Sejuani's got a Sunfire Cape, very, very good item on her because she really wants to stay in the middle of a fight. And, you know, if you're already in the middle of a fight CCing everything, why not do magic damage along the way? I think it does about 30 magic damage a, 40 magic damage a second to anyone around her, as well as giving her a little bit more tanky stats. Very, very good item on Sejuani. Absolutely wonderful at this point. And I love to see this Sejuani build. You got the MOBA boots for the really quick ganks. You can see her building into Aegis now on top of that jungling item. And of course, the AoE damage coming out from that Sunfire Cape just stacks so well with Northern Winds. Which, by the way, got uh, when, when she went through her rework, got an up to 16% uh, health damage on it in an, as an increase from about 8%. Oh man, happiest day of my life seeing that. It was absolutely amazing. I'm just like, yes, 16% and it's flat. It doesn't it doesn't continue to go up as it's ranked. It was it was the best thing ever. I was so excited. Um, I actually love playing Sejuani as a jungler now. I either ban her out in games or I play her in games. There's no in between for me at this point. Really? You just ban her out or play her every single game? Yes. Because I can't... Uh, it's Sejuani's really strong right now. Going up against her, she it's rough. She is very strong. And we can see the Zenith Blade and the stun going down on Tristana as Leona tries to get away that tornado coming out. And there's the ultimate by Leona. Not sure why that is, but the counter ultimate by Sejuani will go ahead and end her life. And we still have the pursuit here. Pantheon coming in from the back lane. And there's the knock up the snare going down onto Sejuani, but it's not going to be enough as Vladimir comes in here to help clean up as well. Cho'Gath will surely go down here. And there we go. There's the double kill for Vladimir coming out. Why? Just just why? Why? As soon as soon as Pantheon got in that fight, we saw so many flashes. In fact, it looked like it looked like we were almost playing StarCraft and there was just a bunch of a grouped up bunch of stalkers and they all blinked at once. It was just a, a mass retreat from the red team. It was really really funny to see, but unfortunately they got taken down quite a bit in this entirety in the, in the entire game, I have to say. At the point of the point of turning in that game was really, I think, where they decided to lane swap. Whereas they had an Ezreal Leona bot against Tristana and Janna. But the thing about that, Tristana and Janna, obviously, yeah, they have a lot of level 2 power and you have to avoid that. Once you get past that, Leona and Ezreal, stronger. By far, Leona and Ezreal both have a lot of burst potential. Ezreal can easily proc a lot of those passive procs from Leona. And Leona has a lot of CC on top of that. If they can catch Janna out, or if they can catch Tristana out, although it's a little bit more viable to catch Janna out because Tristana has a rocket jump and whatnot. And not only that, but Janna can also save Tristana with Tornado if anything were to jump on Tristana. So they could have caught out Janna, put out a lot of burst on her, killed her, and that might have helped them out in lane as well. But unfortunately, it just, they decided to lane swap. And Pantheon actually isn't that... He, he's actually a pretty good champion to be against two people with because he's got a long-range sort of CC ability. He can throw spears. And he's also got that one auto-attack that he gets to negate after he uses a certain number of spells. And not only that, but he also has a stun and a gap close and or escape, depending on if there are any minions behind him. So there are a lot of things Pantheon can do to negate sort of the 2v1. And as we really, as we know a lot, Ryze doesn't have any pushing power whatsoever. He, his tower got taken down very, very early.